In this video, you're not only gonna learn how to survive during a real estate recession or crash, but how to thrive. Brother, let's call it in the crossfire. Let's call it in the crossfire. Hey, what's up guys? This is Steve with Steve Invest. I'm a real estate broker here in Southwest Florida as well as a real estate investor. And uh, today we're gonna be talking about three different ways to, again, not only survive during a real estate recession or crash, but how to thrive. Number one, we're gonna be talking about short sales. Number two, we're gonna be talking about rentals. And number three, we're gonna be talking about bank assets. Now, before we get into the three ways to make money during a real estate recession or crash, we need to take a step back and actually learn more about the history of real estate cycles. All right, as you guys can see from this graph, uh, there are four phases for a real estate cycle. So don't be fooled. You're going to go through them. You're going to have highs and lows. We're just going to prepare you for when we do see uh, any kind of market flattening and or... Um, a crash or a recession. So phase one is recovery, phase two expansion, phase three hyper supply, and phase four you got your recession. So uh, right now we're in year 2019. Um, we're in Southwest Florida. I can feel it. The market's starting to flatten out over here. All right, guys. Number one on the list are short sales. Uh, the last real estate market crash. This is one of the primary uh, ways that we really thrived in our real estate business. Uh, we aggressively went after people um, who were delinquent and paying their mortgage. Um, one of the prime ways that we went and marketed to these people were uh, through the, the clerk of courts websites, which would show it's called a Liz pendants. And that just means it's a pending lawsuit for foreclosure. And now uh, it was a very difficult time because you're meeting with people uh, who essentially are losing their homes, and uh, it, it was it was it was extremely rough, but also it was very rewarding because we helped these people avoid uh, foreclosure. Which um, you know, on your on your credit report and everything else, there's a, a lot of advantages of doing a short sale. Um, and I'm not going to get into those details, but I will have another video on this, um, basically exactly how to go about listing short sales. Um, with the short sales, uh, you can get on the property appraiser site, you pull up the list pendants, now you can mail these people, you can knock on their doors. Um, we used to do bandit signs, we put small ads in newspapers, we ran Facebook ads for this as well, and uh, we were one of the top uh, short sale listing companies in Lee County anyway, in Southwest Florida and we, we sold a ton of them. This is one of the ways that you can really thrive, you or you and your team, um, when the market starts to flatten out or crash. All right, number two, um, get into listing properties for rent. Now I know you're like, oh man, I don't wanna deal with a leaky toilet and deal with phone calls at all point in the night and everything else, that's fine. You don't have to worry about it. Another way you could do this is through um, what we call tenant placement. All right. Now, a tenant placement, you uh, first off, you want to make sure that you can do this strategy in your area, your state, and so forth. But basically, what we would do is we didn't do management; we just did tenant placement. So, um, all rent payments, security deposits, and so forth, they were paid directly to the owner. Um, we usually collected first, last, and security, um, or if it was just first and security. Um, our payment to our company was always the first month's rent. So we would always get paid first month's rent. In that same contract, we would also ensure if the tenant did buy the property that we were in, um, secured to get a, a real estate commission. Um, also, if we had to um, basically re-up the contract for, the, for another 12 months, we would do a half month's rent. It was uh, extremely successful for us. It was another way to keep our head above water and um, and really thrive during the real estate recession that we had in uh, 2008. Um, another key thing to think about too is a lot of these people, um, you know, I think the average time is like three years that an investor is going to hold a property, wound up uh, listing their properties with us for sale. So we, we really made out over the years by uh, 
uh, catering to this market. Again, I'll do another video on this as well where we're going to break down exactly how to go about getting these uh, properties for, for um, uh, lease listings anyway for us. All right, number three and probably one of the more difficult because I think it's highly competitive is going after bank assets. Uh, bank assets can be uh, incredible because if you do a great job, they will uh, just give you a bunch of inventory to get out, get out there and list. Um, there's a lot of work. A lot of times there's a lot of upfront money. Um, I know with all the properties that we listed for, it was a company called Brighton that we listed for uh, their assets. And we would have to uh, get in there. We'd have to do uh, have our guys go in do all the trash outs. If there was uh, open pools, we'd have to have them build cages over these pools. Um, all the utilities went into our names. So we really take full responsibility of the, these properties and that's what you're going to have to do. So you might have to have some deep pockets or bring in another partner or your, your broker to basically help you out in uh, enlisting bank assets. Um, they can be very time consuming. You you know, you're going to be required to probably do weekly visits and also uh, take uh, photos, time stamp photos, um, just so the asset manager understands and knows that you have been on premise last week, the week before and so forth. Um, they can be a little dangerous too because you don't, you know, for your first in inspection, you know, you don't know what you're going to walk into if the owner's still there, uh, if there's a squatter in place. So you got to be real careful about going about uh, getting bank assets. Um, again, I'm going to do another complete video on this um, in terms of really how to go about uh, getting bank assets. But one of the number ways that number one ways that's effective and efficient is calling these asset managers. Um, if you have any small banks in your area. Um, you may want to go and knock on their doors, build these relationships with some of the, the upper management or even um, even if they do have an on-site bank uh, asset manager, um, take these people out to lunch if you can and just you, stay in front of them. You have to make these calls weekly and get in front of these people uh, to show that you guys are hungry and you have the not just um, the skill set or expertise to sell these properties because they sell quick. I mean, they're all at a discount price but you have to convey that you have the team in place and you also have the financial capability to take on you know, multiple assets at a time. I think at one point in time we took on, I wanna say like 10 at really one time within one week and uh, it was crazy, but um, you know, if they're comfortable and confident with your abilities, it, you know, it, it can be extremely rewarding. Now I'm gonna get into more details on all three of those options so you guys can have kind of a step-by-step -step breakdown exactly from um, how to market to these group of uh, sellers or landlords and uh, bring you through the entire marketing process and uh, hopefully you got something out of this. If you did, I appreciate it if you go ahead and hit the like button or subscribe. Um, it definitely helps. I'm going to keep these videos coming out at least once a week. That's my commitment to you guys. I, uh, again, I'm a real estate investor uh, as well as real estate broker. I've owned our real estate brokerage since 2006 and uh, we grew our real estate company to 60 agents. So we have um, a lot of a lot of a lot of stories and I need to uh, put it out to you guys and really express uh, what we've been through and you guys will learn from us as well. Um, if you guys want to read more content, I have a lot of content and free downloads at steveinvest.com. Check it out. You can go there. Free resources. Um, I'm going to keep writing more and more content there as well. So check that out anytime. Comment below if you guys have already survived and thrived in the last real estate crash. I want to hear some of your stories. Did you guys do anything else besides those three target markets that I spoke about? I'd love to hear about it. I really appreciate the support. Thanks a lot, guys.